Now the last set of pictures I've got to go with this case study uh, are from the rainfall radar network. So we can see how intense the rainfall was associated with this depression as it started to move over Europe. We have three figures here. The first one is from uh, 1900 on the 23rd, so 7 o'clock in the evening on the 23rd of January. Uh, the second image is for midnight on the 24th. And then the final image is for six hours later, 6 o'clock in the morning on the 24th. Now at 1900, uh, the, the rainfall associated with this depression is only just starting to come into the, the, the area of our radar network over Europe. So you can see some rather bright colours um, to, um, to the west of Brittany here, indicating the, the rainfall associated with the warm front. Now, uh, by midnight, uh, those bright colours have moved over into to Brittany and into central France, and you can see some very heavy rain associated with this depression. But by 6 o'clock in the morning, as that system is decaying away, and the decay of this system happened very rapidly, as well as the, the development, you can see that the, the heavy rainfall has really diminished quite considerably. And so this particular weather system went through a very rapid life cycle. In a period of less than 24 hours, it developed from being a small wave on the polar front to being an extremely intense depression with very strong winds and very heavy rain until 6 o'clock the next morning, uh, the rain was already dying away. And by uh, midday of the 24th, the, the strong winds were also dying away as well. So uh, these kind of extremely um, intense depressions tend to go through their life cycle extremely quickly. Um, and so they develop and decay away extremely rapidly. That's one of the things that makes them rather difficult to forecast. So why was this particular weather system, this depression, so intense? Why did it cause so much damage and even loss of life? And the answer lies really in the temperature gradient plot that I showed at the beginning of the sequence. This very, very strong temperature difference between the, um, the, um, the tropical side of the polar front and the polar side, a very intense change of temperature over a very short horizontal distance. So when that temperature gradient is very intense, then the weather systems that develop on it are also extremely intense. Now the other factor that led to, to the development of this system was the fact that it formed quite a long way south. Um, typically weather systems in January in the North Atlantic form somewhere off the east coast of um, the US or Canada. Um, this particular system formed quite a long way south uh, in the centre of the Atlantic. And so air was feeding into that system which was coming from the subtropics as I've already said, coming from, up from the Caribbean. So the air feeding into the centre of the system was extremely warm and extremely moist, and so providing lots and lots of energy for that particular weather system to go through its life cycle very rapidly, developing very intense rain and very strong winds. So to summarise what we've looked at today, this, um, these weather systems that we see, um, which bring most of our cloud and rain to Western Europe, uh, most of our strong winds, are associated with the fact that there's a strong temperature gradient across the Atlantic uh, between the warm subtropical air and the cold polar air. Now what these weather systems are trying to do is even out that temperature gradient by transporting warm air northwards and cold air southwards. And we've seen that they do that in the form of a wave, just like a wave on the ocean. Gradually um, the wave of warm air gets larger and larger, bringing cold air around down behind it until the wave breaks, stranding warm air to the north of the boundary and cold air to the south. Now we've also thought about how important it is to think about the three-dimensional flow of air through a depression. It's the rising motion of air near the frontal boundaries that actually leads to the bands of cloud and rain that we see typically associated with the warmer cold fronts. Finally, we've thought about how important it is to think about um, where that airflow is coming from. And we've talked about how the warm conveyor belt uh, within the weather system gives us a continuous feed of warm moist air into the system from the southern side and effectively that's providing the energy for the system to carry on developing. And as long as we have that feed of warm moist air the system can carry on developing. Now as the system develops it gradually pulls cold air down from the north and that cold air can cut off the, the flow of warm moist air on the southern side of the depression and at that point the depression starts to decay away. We've looked at the bands of cloud that are associated with the warm conveyor belt and how it has a, a typical signature in satellite imagery that weather forecasters can recognise. We've also looked at the bands of cloud associated with the cold conveyor belt, the cold air that's wrapping around to the north of the depression, again showing that the depression is starting to develop as that emerging cloud head starts to appear on the satellite imagery.